Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pod Don't Lie with Sam and Stav. We are here, off-season edition, baby, back with that ass. Some fun, and you know what, Sam? Might not be, might not be as long as we thought. It turns out that's the most exciting news. Not that much has happened since the Stan December Van Gundy 22nd? hire. The fucking, we might have Christmas ball back, baby. That's I a big. Know. Danny Green was saying, "I'm, I might not be playing." He said, "Other guys might okay. not be playing." Okay, Danny Green's dumbass can say, well, first of all, Danny Green was barely playing for the Lakers. I don't know if you were watching. I don't know if the Lakers will be that upset if Danny Green takes a couple weeks off. But It might be if they have regular season Rondo. <laughs> that might be a problem. Well, whatever the fuck Danny Green said, there's a big report that came out. Uh, both ESPN did one of those. You know it's big news when it's a th- they do a fucking gangbang reporting when they get all the guys. When it's Zach Lowe, Windhorst, and Woj. Yeah. That's and by the way, that's how'd you like to be in that getting Eiffel Ooh. Towered? With, yeah, you got you got Windy. Windy's you're looking up. You, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a nice that's a nice little threesome right there. Let me be number four. Um those guys, those guys fucking triple team. Those guys gang banged the new story. And also Sham Sharani of The Athletic, where uh, it was from a board of governors meeting. I think it was like their finances committee. So all, basically what we've been hearing, and we I don't think we even addressed it on the show, but people were basically saying like MLK Day was like kind of what you were hearing outside of every report, every podcast you would listen to, ESPN, all that shit would say. MLK Day, it's it's you know Christmas is obviously <clears throat> the league's marquee regular season day, but it's it's my favorite day of the year. It's incredible. It's yeah. weird for a Jew to be like Christmas, it's yeah. But like, dude, it's it's you it, order in Chinese food, it's the best. You have a few beers and you watch ten hours. Of it NBA rocks basketball. cock. You it's maybe what, sit out. You there's maybe like one dud that you're like, I can space out for this. Yeah, you nap for for one half of like you know whatever. I hate to say it. Usually that's the Nick. When it, traditionally that's the Knicks game. Yeah, but you I hate what? to say it. Traditionally that game is the early game, so you get to that's, true. That's, true. that's true. That's true. That's true. Guess what? The Knicks have been on in a while on christmas you know they're gonna motherfucker give it's the one nets. year they're gonna give it to the nets dude <laughs> and Mother, know, it was one year dude, did you they were on, on two years ago did, did you hear word on the street <laughs> no i did not hear the segment you do oh, sam dude, by the way <laughs> what's, by the what's, way, what's word on the way, street this two time years ago when my man ennis can i remember that i ve- i know exactly what happened no now you know when the last time the fucking two 30 seconds ago you're like it's been 10 years now you remember that that, that was the game been, they fucked. That might have been three years ago. Dude. It was two years ago, it motherfucker. Years ago. It was two years ago. It right. feels like three years ago because this season has gone on for fucking ever. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but, yes. dude, word on the street is that D'Antoni might join Steve Nash's coaching staff. Wow. Brooklyn, that's a special word in the street. Courtesy that's, of Sam Bone. That's what they're calling Sam me Bone. Now. Oh yeah. Where did you hear that? What's you can't just read you can't just read things other people are reporting and call it word on the street, Sam. Let me see. Let yeah. me see what I saw there. Let me see. Let's see what okay. Was. okay, that's good. I'm gonna say this. Here's Slam here's, Online, dude. Okay, Slam that's Online. That's legit. something for sure. Well, Amari's post. That. Amari's on that on they Amari's on that coaching staff. That's Dude. that's interesting. See, to me, that's not good. It's that to me, really? it's more it's more of a weird red flag of like I had too many fucking cooks, too many fucking too many just, cooks. I don't know though, dude. He unwieldy. Rigs. I mean, it might be help. Okay. Maybe he, listen. He you bring in D'Antoni, It does feel like a recipe for an early playoff exit. That is that weird, is the dude. Vibe. It's well, though D'Antoni could be like, uh, you know, I read, I read seven seconds or less, and you know, coaching staffs are, di- you know, it, every coaching staff is put together differently, and D'Antoni's staff had guys that, you know, didn't really work with the players that much. I, I mean, I'm curious to see. It's not a bad thing to have D'Antoni on the bench. Let's so any way no, you slice it, it's not a bad thing. No, if anything, he's going to teach Nash, but it's just weird. But that, w- would he respect him enough to? Coach. Would he respect him enough to back off? I think so, but I'm just saying. Everything I hear about the Nets still makes me think like, ooh, 
I'm not reassured. It makes me feel my hypothesis of this shit being like too busy, too loud. Now, could Steve Nash land the plane just right? And could those guys, you know, fucking play for each other? Probably, maybe I it's a possibility. Not. I but hope not. I'm feeling, Who's I'm feeling less. Guy? Who's the tough guy in that team? There's, I mean, you know, I think they do have to trade for. Well, I guess DeAndre Jordan in, the, in theory. Yeah, but you there. need like a you need like a tough perimeter guy too, because it ain't it ain't KD or Kyrie guarding that. Perimeter it's not Karis. It's certainly not Karis. Karis is the bucket off the bench, no nah, man, and Dinwiddie as well. I mean, a great scorer, but I don't He's know. Good, he can he can you know Dinwiddie and Kyrie is a nice backcourt. I actually think. Yeah, but when you're going up against teams in the East that have Marcus Smart. Or you know guys like that. You need a dude like that. Marcus Smart is the first is the first name you think. Not a, either of the guys he plays with. You think they're? <laughs> you think Marcus Smart is I'm a bigger problem elite, for them than elite defenders, dude? Oh, you mean you want Marcus Smart? You not you worried about you guarding him? Yeah, I'm not talking. Yeah, obviously Tatum and <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I was like, I'm not that worried about they were Kemba scores. for that matter. Yeah, and, well, Kemba is, was hurt. I think he'll have a big year next year, but. No, I'm just saying you need a guy like Marcus Smart, like a Draymond Green. You need right, a, you right. need a oh, yeah. blue They're, guy, a bruiser. Defensively, it's and not I'm clear. Not saying, I'm not saying DeAndre Jordan's that guy. I think he's better. He's going to come back looking better than we expect. But you need that dude on the perimeter. Yeah, certainly it's not clear how the fuck the Nets are going to stop anyone. And you know what? Maybe, you know what? Now that I say that, fuck it. Bring D'Antoni back. Get the, you know what? Bring the fucking Suns back. Bring the sun, bring, make the Suns your coaching staff. Fuck, I just realized if they get D'Antoni and they got Amari and they have Nash, I have to sort of root for the Nets, dude. Dude, That's, fuck that shit. I'm telling, they're bringing back my favorite team of, you know, the t- when I was in high school, college, dude. The you seven think I like this of- shit? You look, you think I like <laughs> being on this sinking ship that I have to fucking root for? You I'm not going to actively, root. I'm just going to, but, Starks, you know. Baby. <laughs> he's holding up a Sam is wearing some Knicks a Knicks sweatshirt for our audio listeners the vast majority um but anyway whatever that's neither here nor there the point the, the thing we were talking about was yes the season we had heard MLK day and Christmas was like the, the point I was trying to make was that Christmas is like their big you know it's yeah. the, absolutely the biggest regular season game of the year not they're even special close. uniforms they're making money even off that sure shit. but their second the second biggest day is MLK Day. It's a day yeah. that no other sport, they don't have to compete for it with anybody. You get the day off. It's awesome. It feel for hoops heads, it's like to me, it's it's just as good as Christmas. I mean, it doesn't have that same special feeling of like the holidays, everyone's off, whatever. But it feels it it's kind of the closest thing we got to what the bubble feels like. That's what I'll say. A good bubble game, a good like bubble second round playoffs feels a lot like what MLK does traditionally, where it's like it's not, you know, these aren't the most important games. It's not the biggest stakes, but usually they're good. They're really good matchups. Everyone knows you're playing on national TV. Everyone's Everyone wants to show out. And so the the league was, what we were hearing, what, you know, how about this? I'm going to try to do what you do. What Stav, Stavi's news update, Stav, Stavi's confidential sources, a.k.a. ESPN.com and the athletic.com <laughs> were word, saying word on the street never gives away. <laughs> he's like deep throat. He's like, he's, you're, we never, we'll never know. We'll never know who word on the street really was. You just meet a guy, you meet a guy in a parking garage and he's like, and his canter will be traded so that they can get under the luxury tax. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, let yeah, me like, see your face. He just runs away in a trench yeah. coat. <laughs> um, but Anyway, so the league was trying to get to the MLK day, which seemed reasonable, you know, like January, like, you know, it's shorter than typically you get four months off for the off season. It's shorter than four months, but it's doable. Everyone understands it has to be a little truncated. Um, And the hope was maybe if you push it back a little bit, maybe by the second half of the season, you can get fans in there because clearly the NBA is losing a lot of fucking money um, with having, they make a lot of their money on, on gate revenue. Sure. What what is clear? What has happened? What people are reporting that has happened is that the owners fucking realize that oh fuck we're not gonna have we're not gonna have sorry <laughs> the owners realize we're not gonna have fans like it's not looking that way right like that we NBA is an out, an indoor sport they can't do the shit that you know 
some they have limited fans in MLB games. They have limited fans in NFL games. How do they, how do they even do that with the baseball games? Is it like you just get? You I think you out? get you get. It's like really spread out. It's like yeah. you know uh, an, a tenth of the capacity, and you know there's like glass. There's fucking you're really far away, and it's outdoors. So it's like you know everything we know about the virus is that it's all through the air, that kind of transmission. Sure. It's really not about surfaces. And if you're outside, it's way, way safer. So the NBA does not have being outside going for it. There's no rapid testing. Um, most of the, you know, most of the local governments where they where most of the markets are in are still banning large gatherings. I mean, I'm sure right. fucking Texas or Florida, you, you'll probably be able to figure something out, but for the most part, you can't you can't have so they're basically they're like well it fuck. is funny we found the one thing Florida is good for and that's <laughs> enclosed yes. I guess like art festivals and then enclosing old people dying art festivals guns your grandma and NBA bubble basketball that's right that's, that's right that's and let's not forget the my, little Miami you know cocaine fake asses that's their that's True. their little specialty Some Cuban food all right Florida's all right. It's it's really not though outside of it's Miami. Not, let's be sucks. honest. It's Miami sucks. seems like the. I've had the good real... times in Tampa. I've had okay times in Tampa. I don't yeah. know. You've had good times, or have you had? The just... shows were good. The shows were good. Sides shuts out the spot. Side splitters. Shows are good. Condo, one of the worst of all time. Yeah, you got, you got to get a hotel. Got to get a. I was featuring condo. at a certain point and had to. Literally, they have green carpet. It looks like you're. Yeah. It looks like you're staying in a fucking putt putt. Uh, course <laughs> like, this, like i like I, I tried to be healthy in that condo i went down to do a push-up and i was like dude why are my hands black what the hell <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you take Jewel. your shoe you take your shoes off and your shits get dirtier uh your feet get dirtier um in the house anyway shouts out to bobby jewel who, who shouts out hair piece pinky ring Charlie, that's right uh charlie sheen polo guy ring. yeah <laughs> 58 piss drunk that's right drunk as fuck you'd find him giving out the local comedians i would say maybe some of the worst advice of all time <laughs> you gotta um, say the n-word at the end of that joke like what <laughs> <I'm white>. <laughs> god <laughs> damn fucking, used to go you fucking pussy <laughs> you fucking i leave pieces of shit like you in the dirt and i'm like yeah you can out drink me at 58 that's not something to be proud of that's yeah. like it's bad your liver is begging for a break your liver is begging for a seltzer, anything, a lemonade. Um, his, his liver is like LeBron's knees after game <laughs> game six. Like, please, just give me a minute. Yes. Have you seen Have you seen that picture of Kobe with like twelve ice packs on? That's <laughs> That's Bobby Jewel's liver. That's <laughs> on a Bobby Thursday. Jewel moment ever. I had this hilarious dude uh, featuring for me, Raul Sanchez, and mm -hmm. he's like, you know. Yeah, he. Uh, we're drinking, and it's me, him, this uh, comic rule, Sanchez, who's funny as hell, from Mexico, served in Iraq, yeah. crazy, crazy life, does great material on it, too. And we're all drinking, and Bobby is like, hey, Raul, what tribe are you in? <laughs> and like just it's not even like the right type of racism. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. like, I'm just like, yes. oh, my God, all right. <laughs> and Raul just turns to him, and he goes, airborne infantry, how about you? And yeah. Bobby's, he's got a big, big uh, glass of scotch. He just looks at him and goes, well played. <laughs> yeah. <a> <laughs> he's Beautiful. like, you got me. You know, tech, even though I don't follow any laws, I'm the kind of guy that respects the army and police. <laughs> until they take it, until they pull me over for drunk driving. I have a conditional Blue Lives Matter bumper sticker. It's one of those holograms. <laughs> Where it's like, if you look at it a certain way, it says, fuck the police. But if, <laughs> if, if I'm near any black people, it turns into a blue lives matter a bumper sticker. <laughs> That's the kind of white guy I am. <laughs> <laughs> he really is ridiculous. But uh, yeah, he also respects a good burn. Like those are the laws. Yeah. Like, if you get him. He's like, I will accept the burn. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll pick you up shit faced. Yes. Good club though. Side splitters. I hope to Great get club. I One played side best. splitters. It's actually kind of fucked up. It was the day the, the day I found out Kobe died. I got off the plane oh. and I had to, I had to do a show that night. It was brutal. I remember that, dude. We did, yeah, we did yeah. a Kobe tribute. I remember that. Yeah. Anyway, um yeah, so so Florida, that's what Florida's good for, who knows. So maybe so basically the league has has come to the the fucking understanding that we're, we're not getting fans back. So we're losing all that revenue basically. Yeah. We're just let's think like there's no fans back. So 
we can't give up our our biggest you know we can't give up this many game revenues and it seems like the ratings just were not where they where they wanted them to be right. uh i guess ratings were, were were down which you know i think there's a number of factors for that i think probably i i, I mean i think the way they they record ratings is probably archaic like a lot of people are watching. I watch a lot I of games, it, dude. I, and also, the, like baseball ratings are down. Baseball's not political. They want to blame the NBA being oh, it's not socially, uh, you know. And I mean, look at WNBA is even, even more so. But they want to blame the NBA for being, you know, very aware of causes and outspoken socially, and they want to blame the ratings on that. But it's just not the case. I don't think. I don't think it's the case. I also love that argument because you're basically like, well, racists aren't watching, <laughs> and it's like, so what? <laughs> we should be trying to get racists to be interested in the fucking sport. It's also uh, it's also the same people that are like, man, Jackie Robinson's a hero. And you're like, well, how do you think that shit happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Those people, the people talking about the NBA shouldn't turn off fans with with uh, social justice messages would have been calling Jackie Robinson the N word. <laughs> like there's yeah. that's you're yeah. the same guy. You're the same guy. Just fast forwarded 80 years or whatever. A fuck. black guy playing baseball. They would have been like, can we just keep baseball well, not political <laughs> let's not keep it political they got their own league we got our <laughs> league and you're free to enjoy it um yeah anyway so so essentially now the the proposal on the table that and it's nothing's official yet and maybe we're recording this monday night guys it's 10 p.m right now monday so hopefully by the time i think by the time you hear this, this will come out tuesday morning early um there might be news. There might something might be going on, but typically the owners like they don't really leak anything from these meetings unless they're confident something can happen. Uh, like the last time, it was rare. Like when Adam Silver talked about the play-in tournament or the mid-season tournament, that they he was trying to like drum up support for that. That ultimately did not happen. If you'll remember from this, remember that proposal, the the mid-season tournament. Right, right. Um, but tip, it is rare for them to like leak something that they don't think they can have they, they don't think can happen so i think i think it's early but i love it because it's you know who's going to be in great shape who's been well rested for for a long time now <laughs> the fucking warriors the new york knicks baby oh the knicks <laughs> well um yes yes sam the new york knicks are very well rested that's true um, I think we beat them, dude. We fucking run those teams into the ground. Smart, dude. When, a lot when, of running. When did when did they report? So, well, well, that's that's what we're saying is like so. Basically, the proposal is December twenty second, so that they can get so that they can get Christmas games, and the twenty second will be like it's usually ring ring night, ring ceremony night. TNT gets opening night, ring ceremony. So Ooh. you have to think the Lakers are going to play. I mean, the Lakers have to play on the twenty second. And then Lakers, there's no Clippers, way Lakers, there's no Warriors. way Lakers Clippers Lakers Warriors something like that would yeah. be good Lakers Bucks Lakers Heat was it a rematch maybe the NFL used to do that where they would rematch the Super Bowl it was kind of cool yeah um, um anyway so you got to think the Lakers are, are then going to also play on Christmas um but that's the thing dude if they were if they if if this happens then they basically have to start training camp. December you know what I mean like the Lakers if, if then dude that's what three weeks I mean so there's no preseason which is weird there would be no preseason yeah it, but it's just no weird preseason. it's like they, it's, that's players playing themselves in the shape I worry about injuries like you lose guys like you know Jonathan Isaac all these guys who you know you could you could tear an ACL now and that's because you rush back I mean, look at the NFL. Yeah. Look at all these injuries in the NFL. No, certainly this is this is one of those things where the NBA has been like, we got to talk about player wellness. We got to talk about we got to talk about mental health. And it's like, yeah. oh yeah, you just played in a bump. Like for the Heat and the Lakers, they're basically saying like, well yeah, fuck your wellness and mental health. <laughs> like right. you just played in a fucking. You were just away from your family for three months, and now and you get two months to be around them. And oh by the way, you have to start. Uh, and the, the proposal with what's been floated is like a 70 or 72 game season. So it's not like they're really drastically, it's not going to be 60 games. You know what I mean? Like they're going to be playing back to backs, maybe back to back to backs, like 
So yeah. they're going to be playing four and five night like shit that the NBA has not done in a while. Because well, money, money speaks louder than you know. Money says what, it all, baby. You want to talk about like you're like Kevin Love is so brave for talking about depression. <laughs> yeah. You know what's not good for depression? Tearing your fucking Achilles and having <laughs> yeah. to sit on the sidelines every night. But they're like, we don't look. We're with you. Yes, Rosen, you're brave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, man, it's fucking now. That's crazy. Like the draft is set for, I believe, the 18th. Yeah, Wednesday the 18th. Uh -huh. Free agency would have to be right after that. Like mm -hmm. we basically have free agency starting, I guess, right after that, November 19th. I don't know. I don't know how the fuck you would do it. And quick. And it would be like 10. That that's gonna be fun. Like that's a fun 10 days. Oh, dude, of free we're gonna agency. have to do bonus. Pop. We're gonna have to be. We're gonna have to be on top of shit for sure. Yeah. But you know, whatever. Sounds kind of fun. And look, from a selfish standpoint, from just me, right? I heard that and I have to admit, my first my first thought was hell yes. <laughs> like that was like yeah. my that's my fucking reflex. That's I'm just like, fuck yes, dude. I fucking I'm gonna be just on edibles with a fucking belly full of steak roast and just on on my fucking big ass couch in Baltimore eating pie and watching, you know, whatever fucking lakers clippers i can't wait and i'll be alone um, in my studio apartment eating alone chinese eating food. low main <laughs> oh yeah dude i'm excited though i i i would kill for some basketball I yeah just... and and from and just from an everything perspective it's like yeah dude we don't have to wait like you know we're gonna get into the draft soon right like we're we're we're, we're starting i'm starting to look at you know something I'm i don't scared, know anything dude. i'm fucking about these scared. prospects but it's just like it we it, need a point guard we really need a point guard yeah well i don't know where that i, I haven't looked at it enough but i've heard i'm a lot just of, saying I mean, i'm scared of cole anthony i'm i mean he did not have a well, great he's he's year. like he's like fucking in the 20s he's out of the lottery yeah, but completely then, but the, uh, i don't know though we'll see I, I, but then maybe late he'd be fun to also his dad was a nick i kind of like that you know that's, yeah beautiful it's nepotism that's what's got that's if anything the knicks need more of it's that <laughs> 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 let's get fucking uh uh fuck who's the white guy shooter novak let's see does he have any kids does he have, <laughs> let's, let's, let's fast track <laughs> novak's kids um but I just mean from a calendar perspective, we we would really only have like one week where nothing's going on because in a couple of weeks, it's like, right, like we're really getting into the draft. Then free agency would be like, bang, bang, bang right there. Yeah. And but by the way, that's, and that's where we specialize fucking bullshit speculation. Dude. Oh, it's the best. And also. You know, some teams don't have a fucking coach. The the, the Thunder don't have a like like the, the season could start like who? Where the Rockets don't have a coach, the Thunder don't have a coach. It's crazy. It's really um, weird, and they're both. I mean, if you're James Harden, you've got to be like, what the fuck's happening? Yeah, yeah. Like I know, you, I know he's getting paid. I know Westbrook is getting paid, but don't you think they're kind of like, what what are we doing here? Yeah, and the the answer is what you're doing is you're fucking Republican. The owner, the Republican owner of your fucking franchise doesn't want to who has mob ties apparently so let's oh. be careful let's be careful how much shit we're saying. fuck his ass dude fuck that <laughs> fuck fuck the mafia fuck the texas mafia they're, they're like stop you've been invited to a tour of uh of the houston rockets facilities and you're like dude i'm yeah. i'm get, i'm being a part of their fucking franchise i'm like yeah I'm like, I'm walking like pesci and good yeah, yeah yeah oh i've got unlimited vouchers to the golden nugget <laughs> sam i can't wait They've comped my room. I get all I get. I get all I can eat at their at their world famous buffet. It's gonna Fuck be great, dude. dude. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's it would be really tough. And look, obviously for the players, you feel fucking bad. I mean, then then we have all this other. Okay, so let's say there's no fans. The fucking M the baseball almost got COVID a, a couple different times. <laughs> like they almost and and what's what I what like has been reported so far is that they're not even considering another bubble. Like, it's just not – players just well, dude, don't want to do it. Here's what I'm thinking. You have one player on your team, and it could be the end of the bench guy. It could be anyone who brings that shit. You infect you, – say you're, like, a, a potential six seed. That could fuck up your whole season. You infect – say you're the Jazz, and you're Rudy Gobert again. Yeah, dude. And you if, give it to If Donovan Rudy gets it again, again you that lose, would be awesome. You lose Rudy and Donovan, you might not make the playoffs. That's two weeks. That, True. Those are big two weeks. And that can fuck – I mean – 
I'm just saying the storylines, the drama. Yeah, especially if Jr. sticks with the Lakers. Like you have all, you just had, you know these young guys. You know, is Ubre gonna fucking is Ubre gonna get it oh, waiting man. in line waiting in line for a new Supreme drop? You know what I mean? <laughs> is he is he gonna be a super spreader with all the worst people in the world? He's a supreme um, leg spreader. That guy that's, rules, man. That's Oobs. Right. <laughs> we um, need him on the Knicks, dude. I think his energy is what we need in the Garden. And how do you propose that happen exactly? Look, I, I have all that kinds of ideas. I think <laughs> who, Bobby Portis for Kelly Oubre straight up. Who says no? The Suns. Uh, <laughs> the Suns very quickly. Um, I just like his vibe, man. He's 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 the black Vinny Chase. He's very cool. He's nice. He's he's got smooth offense. He's gotten better every year. He's young. He plays. No, he, listen, Oubre is a good player. He's a, he's a very good player, and he is like he's kind of an ideal sort of, you know, end of the, or like, you know, fifth best starter, fourth best starter on a really good team. Um, Or like a, you know, first, first man up on a bench type guy. I mean, he's a wing that shoots. We nab Ubre and Van Vliet. He's not a free agent. Ubre is not a free agent. I feel like there's a way. (laughs) I feel like he's got one more year. Maybe they want to get rid of him. The the word on the street. Don't tell me. The word Word on the street. They do want to get rid of him. Yeah, well, if they want to get rid of him, they can get value back. I mean, he's a very valuable player. He's throwing. A wi- would, he's a okay, young wing that okay. shoots threes and plays defense. Okay, I got you. Kevin yeah. Knox and Bobby Portis for Uber. No. They're, Why Knox the fuck would they? Knox has got a lot of upside. <laughs> no, that's hysterical. That? No, I would not. I would absolutely not do that. Are you out of your fucking mind? Uber is good right now. Knox is probably not going to be good and maybe He might be good. good, dude. I'm like a He not might good. be. He might be, but not but 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 Ubre is good right the fuck now. The Knicks have to do something, dude. I can't do another year of just nothing. We need something. I'm sorry. I think you're going to have to. I really think this is a year to tank, bro. It's a weird year. I don't know. I'm feeling weird about this one. And it, you know what? This is not this is this really is a year that's kind of if you look at it, it is kind of fucking Tailor made for the Warriors because they are the teams that are well rested, like the the eight that didn't make it, the delete eight or whatever, which John Hollinger calls, you know, Knicks, Hornets, you know, whoever the fuck, uh, whoever the fuck else. I don't, you know, the whole East and then the, the Warriors, the Warriors and the and the and the Wolves basically. Um, you know, the, the Wolves are sneaky fun next year too. Yeah, they're they're another team that's rest, but I mean the Warriors are like they're coming back with their whole fucking team. They're well rested. Uh they've got a chip as you've said. Got a chip on their shoulder. And I and think Wiggins is better than you think he's going to be. Wait, does Wiggins even make it onto that fucking roster? Like onto the roster? I mean, is he still on the roster by the time oh, the season starts? Oh, I thought you were starts? like he's getting cut or something. No, he's not getting cut. He can't get cut. He makes too much money. Right, right. right. Uh, but I think I think Wiggins and the number two is a possible is possible to be moved. I don't know. It depends. Huh. Um, wow. I don't think he's necessarily safe by any stretch, but I think he I think he fits in fine. Uh, but I think he fits in. I think he gives you he, when when Curry. Also, I think Eric Pascal is kind of an interesting piece as well. Yeah, Pascal is definitely. And I liked I liked him fighting for his man Donovan Mitchell for getting an eighty seven or an eighty eight rating on two K. He said, "That's my man. Give him a 90. I love that. <laughs> they grew up together. So I, I love I love the intensity. Pascal is um, kind of a fun off the bench guy. I think. I yeah, think I mean he. Now, yeah, he got really good stats on a shitty team, but I think he is exactly he's he's a good second unit scorer potentially for them. Um, definitely, I think evol- Wiggins. When you give when you give them a break, Wiggins is going to be better than people think. Yeah, and listen, he's not the set. He's the fourth option now, right? He's the maybe the fifth option, depending on what you think of fourth Draymond option. night to night. The fourth option for sure. But also every he's, Canadian- a, he's a good cutter. He can shoot open. I mean, he's, he's, he's going to have a lot more open looks. I'll tell you that much. That's what I'm saying, dude. He's been yeah. taking some contested hard shots his whole career because as great as Car Anthony Towns is, Wiggins was doing a lot of that shot creating, you know? So I think he's going to be interesting. I think every nice Canadian. Boy- I don't know. He was doing shot creating. He was Wiggins or Towns just got fucking double teamed because they he put wasn't it all horrific. He, was, he wasn't getting a lot of great looks. I watched some of those games, and he, and he he would get 
he would do a lot of one-on-one ball. He had to. Yeah. He had, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think with, ISO with, stuff. with a team that's unselfish, like the Warriors, and I'm saying every nice Canadian boy needs a Draymond Green in their life. You need a guy <laughs> like you need a guy who's going to be like, I'll be fucking mean because you won't. Yeah. And certainly if it's if he's going to succeed anywhere, it's a, it's with the Warriors. Exactly. I just think I just think it's possible he gets traded, but I don't know. We'll see. It's possible. I don't, I don't I think, think anyone think wants him. I just don't that, think anyone wants that's him. That's part of the problem. And also, I think his value with the Warriors is greater than elsewhere. Like, what about this? What about something like Wiggins and some Wiggins, but he goes to Detroit and they get Blake? You know what I mean? Like, I just that's, don't. I don't think they need Blake. Blake does yeah. a lot of what Draymond does. I think offensively, he's a yeah, he's. No, he's a better he's a version. Better, he's a better offensive player. Just than- Blake was so good the year, like last year. He was fucking all NBA. He was third team all NBA. Blake uh, is I mean, a great. He's so good. Player. And it's yeah. the kind of thing where I want him somewhere of value. You know what I mean? Like I want him somewhere. I don't I know where. I don't know if he fits with the Warriors. I agree with you. I think he is valuable still. And, and, uh, and he can shoot the three better than Draymond can. He's kind of a point forward. He's well, gotten I think better you'd, every year. You'd play him with. with who would Draymond? you play? Draymond Blake. Is Blake their five basically? Yeah, but, but anyway, whatever. protecting that rim. You had a Javale McGee type for a reason. You need someone who could block shots. And yeah, I, I Blake's not blocking. Blake's not protecting the rim. But I don't know. I would just like to see Blake out of there, and I don't know where else. I, I mean, want him out of Detroit too. I don't like it. I would love for him to be on a fucking contender, make some kind of run. I don't know. Where maybe does the, Blake fit? Who who could he go to? I don't know. It's tough. His because his value is so low and his contract is so high. He's only got two years left now. I also saw something Miami? on Miami. Miami, maybe. Um, I saw this. I saw this on a random website. I literally was just googling Blake trades, like to try and get an idea. And uh, so I don't even know what web. This is mbaanalysis.net. So I don't even know. It sounds official, but I don't know what the fuck they are. Uh, some guy posted Blake Griffin for Torian Prince, Garrett Temple, and Spencer Dinwiddie. Ooh. Uh, Interesting. I just think that does not help their defense at all. And also and they, you lose some depth if you're Brooklyn. But also, And what we were just talking about, they have no fucking wings whatsoever. Yeah. And you're giving up a lot. I mean, I don't think they – I don't think Torian Prince is going to – well, I don't know. K, is KD going to play all his games? Probably not. Um, Probably not. But I don't know. I just don't think that's interesting. I, I right? can't – even though he's set out a while now, I still see him being on probably a minutes restriction. For sure, for sure. I don't know, man. I just would love to get. I don't know. I don't know where else he could go. His contract is so big. I think it's, it's a fun like game. I yo, dude. I'm glad he got paid. But yeah, he. It's so weird that Clippers team is such an ultimate like what could have been. They came so close. They buckled against another Doc buckling against the Rockets that year when Josh Smith was like, "Oh, I can shoot threes now," and everyone was like, yeah. "What?" Well, that team was just fucking. Honestly, it just didn't really. DeAndre and Blake, even at the time, didn't really truly make sense. Um, oh, but, but they were so fun to watch. Reddick and CP3, and, and they were. But ball, you know, I don't they know. Were, they were just a little. They fun. were just a little too redundant. And he, DeAndre, to me, as a defensive player, was always one of those guys who had better stats than his. Actually, like Giannis, a lot of people were mad because Giannis's like raw counting stats weren't that great in comparison to winning DPOY or whatever. But to me, DeAndre was kind of the opposite where it's like, yeah, he had good stats, but it's like, did he really affect the game that fucking much? I, I don't know that he did. And their but. other problem was they never had that kind of elite three they needed. It was always, never, I, yeah. I love Matt Barnes, but I think they needed someone who gave him a little more offense and, yeah. uh, you know, but Barnes again was fun as hell. I mean, I loved and, Matt Barnes. And the other thing with that team is like, yeah, no, again, DeAndre, very good, but I think he really was like the proto. I mean, he was doing that rim running shit that everyone in the league does now, but you had, you had Chris Paul, like they were kind of ahead of the curve. I think a lot of shitty centers would have looked pretty good in that role. Yeah. Chris uh, Paul makes you look Chris good. Paul. Exactly. And if you can trade him for some kind of help on the wing, but I mean, that's neither here, nor but also there. Jamal Crawford is such a good scorer that I think sometimes you get trapped in that like fourth quarter, let's feed it to Jamal. And it's like, I love Jamal Crawford, but he wasn't winning games with the Knicks doing that shit in his prime. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's certainly not a sustainable part of the it's not a sustainable no. like offense. Because he would hit such difficult shots. I know? was like, listening to 
I was listening to this podcast where a guy who worked this I get the one of the athletic podcasts and a guy that worked uh at for the Clippers at the time he was in the video this guy mowed the keel who's who's good I mean if you guys are the athletic subscribe to it if you're interested in like reading more in-depth pieces I do a lot of the research I do comes from there he worked for the Clippers and he said that like they would like the video guys one time threw out like sh- like who would you rather have Blake or or Kevin Love at the time. And that's kind of interesting because Kevin Love at the time for Blake, like I, it sounds crazy. Cause Blake, you know, rookie of the year, all these dunks, he's such a star, yeah. but Kevin Love probably honestly was, would have been a better fit for those Clippers. Then well, DeAndre the floor. Yeah. Cause Blake stretches the floor Blake and he became a, a very good three point shooter. Yeah. Right? Towards the end. But yeah, but not, not when they needed him to be. But then again, I would rather, I mean, yeah, I would, I would rather have Kevin Love because of what, I mean, especially with the Cavs, he made so much more sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Just in, on that particular team, it's an interesting conversation because it's like, yeah, I think Kevin Love probably actually would have made that team better, even though you could say Blake might have been a better player. I mean, I liked watching Blake more I don't at the know, time. though, dude. I, Blake was really, really, I think, a better all-around player. But it's not and, – and definitely – but it's not about – I mean, Love was a great pa- – like – a lot of the stuff right, that right. love is very think, good. And again, think about Blake early Blake before he like was super polished. Like, yeah, he was out of his mind athletic, but he might have been better off in Minnesota at the time. You know what I mean? Then wow. You know. Yeah. Although I mean, that I mean love, not I he's mean, wouldn't have been better off. No obviously. disrespect to either, man. I love Kevin Love. Love was, was so a, good though. A 13 We've, board a game rebounder in Minnesota. I mean, he was he is still a great rebounder. He yeah. he is and he when he was thick, it was like he got a little thinner. He got yeah, yeah, but when yeah. he was thick, dude, when he had that Kyle Lowry ass, it was yeah, like yes, he was yes. pulling down every board. And uh and yeah, and Kevin Love is I mean, the guy won the three point contest. The guy yeah. can shoot with the best in the league. Yeah, absolutely. And get you boards. Defensively, Blake gives you much more. I will say that. Yeah, but Blake's never that's never been a strong suit, right? No, it's not a strong suit, but I think just physically and what he has. Sure. And a better athlete, absolutely. For sure. But you know it's a good conversation. It's an interesting conversation. And also if DeAndre is all that defensively, he should be able to cover a little bit for I got one for you. you. Julius Randle for Kevin Love, who says (laughs) right now? Yeah. I would take him. You wouldn't take Kevin Love for Julius Randle? I would do that right now. Kevin, how many years? But I think he's got three years left on his deal. Really? No, I think it's two. Is it just two? I would take Chris Paul and Kevin Love and just fucking <laughs> rock that seven seed. <laughs> I'm so hungry to make the playoffs. Dude. Damn. What would you try? But I, I think the the salaries don't match. Kevin Love has way too much. First of all, let me again. Who says no is the Cavs. <laughs> Unless, unless yeah, speaking of redundant, the Cavs are redundant with uh, Garland and Sexton. I think Garland and Sexton, sure, yeah. But I think, but those guys are so young that I think I, I, I actually think it's a smart move for the Cavs because if they thought that Garland was the best player available to them, they should have taken him. Sure, I think I think a lot of teams getting that. It's the reason why the Cavs didn't draft Oladipo when because they had just drafted Deion Waiters, remember? And they and that's sure. when they take Anthony Bennett. And it's like, well, yeah, they would have been a lot better off with Oladipo. It's like, fuck Deion. No question. I, people I will fall in love though, with, the, with the young guy they draft, and it's like, that can be a... I like, will say that Colin Sexton looks like fucking... <laughs> looks like Damian Lillard when he plays against the Knicks. So. <laughs> yeah, I think... I don't... You know, it's tough to say with either of those guys. I think they're... I think Sexton will be a fine offensive. I don't think he'll ever be good on defense. He's like little and whatever. But I think he'll be a fine offensive point guard you know maybe second unit type of guy it's hard to tell with these i mean so much talent coming in the league it's hard to tell man yeah um anyway so that's the big news is that the nba might be coming back faster than we than any of us thought seems too soon i mean we can say that it does seem too soon without question too soon i'm i'm pumped as a fan but if i were one of these players i'd be like dude give it a fucking minute well and i will say this why do the play but the players have just they it's a 50 50 revenue split right so the reason the players would do it is because i saw there's one estimate out there that starting on the 22nd versus starting sometime in you know late january is a 500 million dollar difference and so wow. that's 250 million to the players you know obviously broken down by how much they make but you Here's know there's a question too though 
what when's the next time you can picture an arena at capacity and i'm not talking like you know 50% i'm talking like like picture when is the garden going to be shoulder to shoulder again you know the, and that's i think that's a good question and i think that also informs this decision i could see it next season Really? I really could. I really could. Especially if there's a fucking, I mean, if there's a vaccine, Sam, that's the thing we're talking about here. Like if there is a fucking vaccine. Don't you think a vaccine is best case spring though? Well, I'm sorry. Not, not this season coming up. I mean the season after. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean like, no, 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 no. I don't mean, no, no. I cannot see it happening this time. No, but I think by 2021 or I guess late 2021, I could see a vaccine. You know, like I could see we might next. Be, we might be able to get some affordable tickets again. People might. Yeah, uh, dude. Oh, I'll be there. That's the thing I realized is like I was watching a college football game. I was like, look at these fucking losers. I can't believe they're risking their lives. And then I was like, if I could get courtside seats, I would, <laughs> I would be at the NBA. I would be watching. Giannis. I would be watching. I would be watching Giannis courtside with a mask on for sure. Um, but so and and that's a good question though because that is the re that's part of the reason they're doing this I think is because they they're basically like all right well we got to punt on this year too so let's not fuck up the next year we can get we can bounce back and if they because they didn't the ratings were down we started talking about that and got on a little bit of a tangent the ratings were down uh, anyway you slice it whatever the reason you know there's a ton of stuff going on it's a political thing it's they're going head to head against football and you don't it, it's clear they could not do that so they basically they want to get back to owning the summer right they want to get back to owning the early june and july they want that yeah. to be the finals they want that to be and then free agency in a normal year we're talking about free agency for the entire month of july you know what i mean like and the draft and all that shit so they want to get back to the regular schedule and right. by doing this, by because if they're going to do that, something's going to get truncated somewhere, right? So they're saying, fuck it. This ye- season is going to be fucked either way. We're right. playing in empty arenas. We're not going to make our money back. Let's make as much money as we can with TV deals. Let's get back to the schedule. And then the next 20, you know, the 2022 season, that's the one that fucking counts. That's the one that we're trying to get back to. And I actually think that's not bad. That's, that's not bad thing. Hey, I, I mean, look. I realize I, I, I don't I like going to games. I can watch basketball on TV all day. I'm I'm good with it. You know what I mean? And yeah. Basketball like certain sports don't translate. You watch hockey in person, it's a whole nother fucking thing. Right. Basketball, you 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 you're getting basketball for sure. And yeah, both of us are guys that probably well, I don't know what'd you say. You I go to like at least four about four games a season at least something like that. Something you might like go that. to a couple more. Well, if but- I if I'm if I'm on the road. I right. like seeing, I mean, like, that's fun. Know, like yeah. Yeah. Games, but it's like, it's fun to see two teams that are not your team. Totally. Yeah. So, you know, we're, and we're, we probably go to more games than the typical NBA consumer. I would say, I, I bet you most people go to one game a year, if that, Yeah. and most people just watch it on TV. And I think the league is saying like, fuck it. This year has got to be TV. So let's, I, I mean, I think ideally, I don't necessarily even mind this start, but I think if you're going to do this, you got to you got to fucking spread out the games a little more. Like, oh, my God. Yes. Like, yeah. like y- if you're going to make them start at such a truncated off with such a truncated off season, it's got to be 65 games. Got to be 64. You know what I mean? Like 70s, 72 is too much. Like, make sure they don't have back to backs. And they said there's probably not going to be an all star uh game. No all star break. None of that. They will have a break. It's a bummer, though. It's a bummer for first time. People yeah, who've never sucks. It. Does suck. And I do and love All Star Weekend. God, damn. it's super fun. But, but at the same time, they're giving them it. a week off. You can't, do and you can't do it. You can't everyone meet up in one place. <laughs> like it's insane. Um, but um, so you know, we'll see, man. I I think I think at the end of the day, none of this can happen without the uh, the players association signing off. So that's what's happening right now. Like as we speak. They floated this out to the media so the fans will start talking. So assholes like us will start talking about it. So fans will start talking about it. So people can start turning the idea over in their brains, but also so that the player, you know, this is happening. Players are discussing it. They're figuring a way out. And uh, ultimately I think just like with the bubble, it'll, it just comes down to money and it comes down to, you know, maybe they have to artificially inflate the cap a little bit so that players' salaries don't get as 
you know, don't take as much of a dip or something. Maybe how they many have to make. Do you think are going to sit out? I think people are going to. I think about Avery Bradley, who sat out with the Lakers and would have a championship right now. Right. I mean, he does have a championship. He still gets a ring. You know what I mean? Though. I know what you mean. He didn't. He wasn't there for the run. Yeah. He wasn't there for the for the. I mean, he's got a ring, but that's a good question because if the NFL and the MLB has showed us anything, it's that this is the time to sit out. Like realistically. Everyone who sat out because they were scared of the bubble made a mistake. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. Obviously, some people sat out for different. You know, Trevor, Trevor Ariza yeah. sat out because of his kid. But the people that were that sat out because of health reasons, it's pretty clear. Well, you know, no one there was nobody ever tested positive. Everyone was fucking, you know, whatever. Uh, this time, though, the NFL and the MLB playing, sim- doing similar stuff. People test positive all the time. It gets spread from from teammate to teammate. Now, the NBA is smaller than both those leagues. That's something going for it. Um, and players already understand the testing protocols. And But at the same time, at the end of the day, it's fucking, it's the, it's, you know, the honor system. It really is. And, you know, some of these guys are 19, bro. I know. Like, some of these guys are going to make dumb decisions. Uh you know, and also like, can you blame them? They're kids, man. They're kids, absolutely. Some IG model who's showing you titties, showing her wants you to be the first person. Eh, 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 I've got a cough, but look at my <laughs> look at my tits. It's like, look, it's my first year in the league. I'm on a rookie contract. I live in a sick apartment. Yeah, come over, <laughs> come know? over. I I'll have a glory hole installed. I'm that's why, dude. That's why. That's what the league needs to do. My fr- last time I set my my. Uh, idea for the bubble was uh, animatronic Disney prostitutes that I don't think they listened to me this time in every team facility, they need to install plexiglass glory holes so that you can see the woman who's sucking you off and fucking you. It's not, it's not like the typical arousal that comes from not knowing fully who's sucking you off this time. It's purely for health reasons. So, and maybe even maybe even like uh, those things like astronauts or nuclear people that work like you know you know where you put your hands through the gloves that are attached to the wall. Absolutely, you know that thing. They need those as well. They need those so you can squeeze a titty. As she runs away, he's like banging to the door like an ex yeah. machina. He's yeah, like, come yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you use the phones from jail to to <laughs> dirty talk. But that's <laughs> I love it. I think Who's we've the solved best that. At dirty one. talk in the NBA. Oh, in the NBA, interesting. I'm saying Pat Bev has got to be in the conversation. <laughs> I think he takes it too far. Pat Bev is <laughs> Pat Bev. Pat Bev is blowing past your safety word. <laughs> it doesn't even. <laughs> it does, he is. He is not. He is not respecting your boundaries. He's not. He's not a good dom, don't as we more, say. Don't we have some more questions we didn't get to. Let's take some questions. Let's. Yeah, we have some good questions. Actually. And we do have a special segment at the very end. We do have a special segment at the very end. Brought to you um, by the people who brought you word on the street. <laughs> that's right uh we have you know we have a lot to get through let's just take a couple here this is um oh this is interesting zachary hamill we kind of talked about this already sort of uh love the show fellas if they both come cheap since both teams just want the money off any interest in reuniting blake and cp3 in new york that's probably the seven seat or so I would um, do it. hey as long as we don't have to they don't like this. each other though right they i don't know i don't think they do i, I don't think i am a fan of both yeah, for sure. I, think I don't think they, they would change the culture. I think they're both tough players. I don't think either one of them would be thrilled to play for the Knicks. I'll put it that way. I think I think Blake wants to – I think Blake is probably going to take – this is another weird year. I think he's going to get fully healthy. You know, maybe, maybe he can rehabilitate his trade value because at the trade deadline – then it's really just a season and a half of his deal. And next year he becomes an expiring. So his contract in and of itself has value. And if he can up his, just, if he just becomes a better player or just shows that he's, he's back to the level he was, he actually suddenly becomes very valuable next year. So if I were the Pistons, I think you kind of hope he, minute. you give it a minute, you hope yeah. he fucking play, he, you know, he shows that he's totally back. And next year he's going to be really easy to fucking trade. I'll say this um, about Chris Paul. Yeah, who's his, who's his one of his three best friends, Carmelo Anthony? Look mm. what the fucking Knicks did to Carmelo. Like, I th- I'm sure part of him is like, fuck that franchise. Sure, but, but how about this? Unless 
Carmelo comes back. Exactly. We reunite Melo and Chris Paul. Oh, dude. My only fear with that is it's like when when you have like three roommates and two of them are already friends. And then that yeah, one guy yeah, is like, yeah, what the yeah. fuck's going on? That one guy is the Knicks youth. That's right, right, me. right, right, right. Well, the thing, the thing that we have going for us in terms of CP3 is that CAA was his agency. Leon Rose right. was his agent. So, you know, he was one of their marquee clients for so long so you know it's a possibility um but yeah i don't think blake makes any sense as much as i would love it and yeah. i don't think blake wants i think blake really has uh i think blake really has it in him to be the third p like a missing piece for a contender like that's his ideal role right now at the end of his career he still he i mean like we said he was all nba two fucking years ago and then I, he got I'm hurt like you, my only fear is that like a lot of bigs now, like where, where do you play him? Do you play him at the center? That's where it gets confusing. Yeah, it interesting. Seems like you need a rim protector. Like I think it would be weird to play him with Mitchell Robinson, you know. And I want Mitch to get more and more minutes. I want right. to develop Mitch. So I don't. Maybe I think, maybe the Heat is the answer. Maybe the Heat makes that's sense what I'm with Bam. Yeah, yeah. With Bam. That's why the Heat popped out to me. I was like, oh, Bam can kind of step out and hit the jump shot, and yeah. maybe their defense becomes pretty lethal. Yeah, maybe if they strike out on Giannis, they they swing a trade for for Blake next year. They went for him a couple of years ago. Yeah, so you know, so it's something, something to think about there. Um, but you know, like uh, we are, we love the idea of Chris Paul. We have talked about it a lot. Not a lot of yeah. Knicks fans are there with us, but I, I, just I don't, don't know. Don't give up picks, man. I just don't. I I don't get like. Hopefully, the Bucks, as you said, are cheap as hell and. And there's no market for Chris Paul because yeah. he's the guy. You're talking about Blake increasing his value. CP3 did not have the value he had a year ago. Too. Right. Oh my God. Not even close. Not even fucking close. Um, this is from Pat Spillane. Would Derek Rose have outperformed Kemba as the Boston point guard in these playoffs? Tatum's no. first. No. Tatum's <laughs> first ring with the Celts or other. Oh, here's another one. Tatum first ring with the Celts or other team. Would Baines have put them over the heat in the Eastern Conference Finals? No, but we I found. Think, I think you know Baines what we found? Underrated though, I like. We have found Celtic Sam with, with these questions. We, we were well, just we know. were Baines away. A Baines uh, away. <laughs> and the, I do. I do think Derek Rose. No one is Baines away. <laughs> Derek Rose to me does not make sense as a starting point guard. Like he's an off the bench guy to me right now. I, yeah. I think he's a great like second unit. Like I'm gonna get mine. Well, there was like, there was. Yeah, his I don't think he doesn't. Not enough. Kemba was I, clearly hurt. Kemba did. The, the only reason this is even something to talk about is because Kemba did look like shit because he was hurt. And I think the thinking is, well, Kemba didn't give a shit anyway. D Rose would have given us what he gives gives them, which, but at the same time, that's really just fucking head down driving. You know what I mean? Like he's a good scorer. He is. Uh, he's regained some of that explosiveness. He's not he can get to the Project, cup. Who is playing incredible ball? Yes, no, certainly not. He's not out playing. I just, yeah, I don't. I think that's crazy. Tatum's first ring with the Celtics. If they win one, I think Tatum's a stud. I, I, I have no idea. I, I don't see them getting rid of him. Right. So if he wins sure. one, I think it'll be with the Celtics. And then right. as for Baines, no, you're not a Baines away, but I'm, I'm a Baines fan for sure. I think he's yeah. like a, he's a, he's a tough player. He can step out and shoot the three. I think he's like slightly better, at Daniel Tice. But yeah, the idea that yeah, the idea that Baines would have fucking stopped Bam is hysterical. Um, and and Pat ends his thing with "Suck my nuts." The Celtics deserve love. No, they don't. They don't. I'm sorry. No, they do not, Pat. We're sorry, Pat. And actually, Pat, you can suck our nuts. <laughs> you got so we see your two little you two, your two little baby Celtics nuts, and we raise you four fat, fat nuts to, yeah. to choke on. Mine are shriveling up because they're Nick's nuts. So they're not, <laughs> yeah. they're not good nuts. But Stav has kind of like Bucks Giannis nuts. I have Giannis. So I have the time MVP, you know. You know, the the the, the playoffs would just did not shrink my nuts. Giannis' stock is still very high. He's 25 years old, two MVPs. Suck my nuts. Uh, now, this is this one we got from Ryan Limbag, who asks, Hey, guys, love the pod. T-Wolves Homer checking in. What do you think Cat needs to do to get to the next level and win more? Do you think he will improve on defense? Thanks, guys. Go Wolves. I think he needs to fuck Lizzo, dude. 
I he think needs he to needs fuck to Lizzo. Step yes. Step up and take that challenge. Absolutely. Truth hurts, dude. Get in there. You need he needs to fuck Lizzo and he need yes, because that will increase his physicality. Yes. Right? That's you know, he's he's out there. The woman he that allegedly got he got cucked by from Jimmy Butler, she wasn't a big girl. She was thin. Cat's a big guy. If he can't even fuck a large human, how do you expect him to be able to move a seven footer off the block? So you point. need to work your way up. You need to start mm-hmm. fucking big girls. Look, Lizzo, certainly she's a fan of the hometown team. But if it's not Lizzo, you got to fuck another plus size cutie cat. You got to get your you got to engage your legs. You got to practice boxing out with your dick out. Yeah. And then and it'll gonna, just be you're easy. You're going to throw stiff arms to Gorgie Dang. And he's going to be like, it'll be oh nothing. God, what are you doing? And he's yeah. like, I've, I've been working. He's like, why are so- you hard? <laughs> he's like, yeah. that's, that's, that's what Cat needs to do. He needs to I think fuck- Kat- offensively can't really take that much more of a step because he's, he's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. It's, it's defense, man. He, and you know what? He is so good on offense that if he were to have, I mean, this season will be interesting because if you, if he just has a couple teammates, you have to respect, you can't guard him. You Malik straight up Beasley, cannot guard him. They got Hernan Gomez, right? Just, I think Beasley, the very fact that you add Beasley and um, fucking what's his face. D'Angelo. D'Angelo. D'Lo. Cat might be unstoppable then and there. I mean, they had no one that could shoot, la- but, you know, before those traits. Nobody, dude. Except Cat, their who's a fucking 40% free throw, three their point shooter. Their defense is still a problem. We'll still say. a big problem. And, but I have, I mean, people, you I know, love he was D-Lo. younger. I, I hope D'Lo is fun as hell to watch. That smooth jump shot, his handles. I, I, I like his game a lot. And, and you know, let's not forget Cat. What was it? Four years ago, like after his rookie year, maybe after his second year, during that there was a GM survey. I don't remember who did it, ESPN or NBA. I don't remember who did it, but he was the number one choice number for one. which for which player to build around. Number you know who one else was number one for a minute. Who's number that? one overall pick, Andrea Bargnani. Okay, <laughs> by that logic. Okay, <laughs> we traded away picks for him. He got fucking fleeced by. Masai he was Jerry. never at any point the consensus best player to build your team around. He Sam. was the first overall pick in, in the draft, <laughs> and we got fleeced, and I'm not over it. But yeah, dude, I think Ryan to answer your question. Yeah, I mean, offensively, he can't do any better. I mean, he's he's unbelievable. I mean, I guess you could argue he could be a a maybe a bit of a better rebounder and a little bit better of a post-up player, but he doesn't need to be yeah. a post-up player. He's his, his electrifying. Ball, he's like Kevin Love with with he's a better, more, he's better shooter with, than yeah. with a more polished offensive game. Yeah. Like he yeah, he just needs to become a better defender. But and he's got the the thing is he's got physical tools that Kevin Love did not have. Right. Uh, he's got he's got the physical tools to be. In fact, people again, his rookie year, he was not that bad at defense. He really wasn't. Yeah. Um, and I just think he really did not mesh with Tibbs, obviously. Sure. And you or know, Jimmy. or Jimmy certainly that. And you know, I think he's got it in him, and I would still believe in Cat. I would be nervous if I was a Wolves fan because I think Cat's going to be fine. I just don't know if he does it with the Wolves. Also, um, D'Angelo Russell. It's always weird when best friends link up. I mean, that's kind of what we're looking forward to with the Nets. You know, when the, I mean, and those are two I champions. Think that, those are two champions. It's different. Right. These are two guys who kind of haven't really been on winning teams yet. D'Angelo had that one stretch with Brooklyn, uh, but two guys who really have not. And won even much. then, and even then, like. He was good, but let's not forget he was a, uh, an injury alternate to the All-Star game. And Karis LeVert got hurt. And before that, Karis was their fucking go-to guy. And D'Lo just kind of stepped in there. So things kind of broke right for him. D'Lo was very good for the Nets that year. He was, he was very, very good, good. But I, but it's you could, I mean, that is what happened. I mean, he was not their number one option. It was really the injury to Karis LeVert that opened up the space for him to be the guy. Um, yeah, but so, he was taking Karis LeVert over D'Angelo Russell. I don't know. Uh, really? Are you are you positive D'Lo is going to continue? You th- do you think it's you think he's a lock to make an All Star team ever again? Only no, only because he's in the West. The West, the West is unreal. Yeah, true. I'm think just about, saying. Think about the people that are not making it in the West next year. It's going to be a long list. For sure. I j- I just I just think like. He had he benefits from a, like being a little bit more high profile, I would say, than his talent. I think he's good, but 
I don't I think if let's put it this way, if he wasn't Cat's best friend, if Cat didn't really want him on the team, I don't think this is that great a move. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. Like, so they're servicing the star and his I happiness. think I think between his skill set and how much it could help bring back Cat, it's a good move. It's a, it's a smart move, but you know, he's and, and again, look, he needs more offense around him whatever. And getting rid of fucking getting rid of uh, Wiggins needed to happen. So whatever. I mean, especially if you wanted a lot of pressure on both of them to put up 25 a game each, if they're going to do anything. Oh yeah. They've both got to put up 25 a game. Easy. Easy. More, more. Cat's got to put up 28. Yeah. Yeah. Cat's got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We'll see. I mean, he's he's capable of doing that though. He he is. is capable. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't love this team and I don't, I don't like Beasley is a good player, uh, but I, I don't know where you're getting your offense really. To be honest, your know. offense, your that's not, you mean defense? No, I mean I know that I know that Towns I think, and D'Angelo are getting you points. I don't know who else is getting you those points besides Beasley. Who else is giving you ten points, fifteen points? I don't. Defensively, they're a huge liability. Yeah, I think I don't think the offense is going to be an issue here. I mean, I don't All know right. who does who is starting the rest of the. I think I mean I think they can really hope to do a fucking their own little Jokic Murray thing. You know what I mean? Like that really is what you what you look for. Yeah, but that team has guys. more weapons. But you're right. Yeah, I guess that's the hope. I I just yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was thinking about you know before uh, I saw a thing saying they did a celebration post to uh, De- Demarcus Cousins, and I saw a lot of posts being like a lot of comments saying like. If he's healthy, he's still a top three big man, which I think cannot be further from the truth because there are some talented big men in the league right now. Oh, wow. Interesting. You don't think if she's saying if 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 Boogie never gets hurt. If he never gets hurt, fine. Maybe he is. But I, I don't I still kind of. OK, not not the Jokic. last injury. Yeah, I'm taking Jokic. I'm taking uh, obviously taking Davis. Yeah. yeah. I take a healthy Embiid. Are we calling Giannis a big man? I don't know. Yeah, I take healthy Embiid. I think that's, but that's where the line stops to me. You don't call Anthony Towns? Yeah, because take- Boogie, Boogie never really put it together on defense either. Huh? As good as Boogie is, I I take Towns just to avoid the, the Boogie Cousins headache. Right, right, right. And then and then we haven't even gotten, I don't think Bam yet, it, a never injured a never injured boogie, but Bam probably at some okay, point. Okay, here's my argument for why you take Bam. Why is he, that? He's the second guy in the fucking finals. Yeah, that team almost won it all. Boogie was boogie. so good though, dude. I'm t- if we're talking about never injured, never injured. That man was a fucking you know, all right, all star. I guess it's who you want to build your team around. Yeah, yeah talent wise, he's in the mix. I I take all those guys above Boogie, and I know Boogie's a beast. I'm not trying to disrespect him. Yeah, I'm trying to look at his fucking stats here. I don't know when he made other guys better. I mean, he he was a fucking two time All NBA. I mean, it's crazy to think he was. Maybe I'm disrespecting him. Tell me, he if was I'm... really good, man. I mean, he was fucking really good. It's always a headache in Sacramento, though. 27 and 10, like 27 and 11, 27. And yeah, I mean, 27, 11 and a half, not a great passer for, I mean, but you know, his best season, 28, five assists, 10. Maybe I'm, you know what, in terms of talent, I take him in terms of the total package where it's like, shit, is this going to be, yeah, dude, dude, that last year, that last year with New Orleans, I didn't realize he played. I mean, he only played half the season, obviously before he fucked his knee up, but he let it up. 25, 25, 12, and five, dude. He was he was having 40 and 20 games, dude. He yeah, was, no, he, he's great. He was looking like the, the go-to guy on a team with AD. Yeah. Yeah. But that's also because I think his attitude was more like, I'm getting it. And AD was more just chill to be like, I'll be, I'll do the other shit. It, yeah, that always has been that always has been the vibe on AD. But anyway, good question there to our friend Ryan. And why don't we start our next set? Why don't we wrap up here with our next segment, our last segment here? Uh, and we want to say, by the way, thank you to everybody who has been, uh, who's uh, answered quite good. If you want, if you have questions, you can periodically throw them at pod. Don't lie uh, at gmail.com and, uh, and I'll, review us on, on Apple as well. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, let me pull up some and subscribe to that fucking Patreon, dude. Patreon.com slash pod. Don't lie. We're bringing, 
one episode a week, a bonus episode, and I think we're we're killing those eps, dude. You know what? We'll even uh, well, let's even fucking read some of these fucking reviews, baby. Let's do it. Um, let's see what we have here. Here we go. From uh, Sufi sixty nine says, "I listen while I j off." Stavi's constant burping helps me get where I need to go. Very nice. This Lovely. is from Truffle Salt five thousand, who Love says, it. "I'm a girl and I like it." That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Robertson X. Great podcast. Seen them do stand up and they both kill. Thank you there, Chrissy. Yeah, Funny. Man. And they know more about basketball than I expected. I'm on the Patreon. Can't get enough. Wow, Chris. About to suck your little pee pee. Um, Don't call his pee pee little. When I'm sorry. You're nice, fat. A- you're yeah, nice, fat right. pee pee rooney. Um, <laughs> so this is from Matt G. Matt JG 99 Sam knows can't believe Sam was right about playoff Ronjo nostril Domus does oh he calls you nostril Domus <laughs> do I big nostrils is that what it is? I don't think you do I'll I don't maybe he's just being nostril. anti-semitic <laughs> <laughs> playoff uh, Rondo dude I I look yes Samster Domus here we go did we read this one already from this from big gulp one Come for the b-ball talk, stay for the pegging. As someone with a nascent interest in basketball, I'm loving the pod so far. Excellent commentary, good back and forth, etc. But I gotta say, it's refreshing to hear a good, healthy discussion about the size of players' cocks and which coaches like getting pegged. <laughs> All around great show. I subbed to the Patreon immediately. Wow, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. And, and um, speaking of getting pegging, you know, there's one coach you could use. I think a better handle on life maybe smoke something oh yeah smoke something really nice uh we've talking got to you budenholzer i'm talking to you absolutely our man needs to what he needs to be spoken some high quality cbd from our <laughs> friends at cushy dreams uh and you know i i myself might be able to tonight as soon as we're this is a late night one this is a, this is a pod don't lie after dark i myself i'm gonna kick back i listen i'm gonna be honest with you guys a little peek behind the curtain I've been prairie dogging for the last 10 minutes. I had a big dinner. I had some chicken thighs and they're fighting their way out. If only I had some high quality cushy dream (laughs) CBD right now to relax me. Although hopefully not my sphincter, keep that nice and tight, but put me into a place psychologically where I was okay with holding in a shit. Unfortunately, I'm sure, I'm sure Cushy Dreams is like, thanks for working in prairie dogging into our pitch here. <laughs> into our little pitch. Yeah. Well, guys. oh, that's right, Sam. I didn't even re- realize that we were doing advertising because I love the product so much. I just naturally speak about it in these kinds of glowing terms. Uh, if you listen, they got the fucking f- highest quality CBD, lab tested, higher than the other bullshit. And look, these aren't gummies, this, it's not a vape. You're smoking a, fu- they got pre-rolls that come in these cute little, if you're a video, uh, if you're looking at the video here, I'm holding it up. I actually have a pre-roll canister right here. They come in that form. Uh, we, it's a, a gram of high quality smokable CBD. They also have just three and a half grams, an eighth, if you will, of vacuum sealed. If you want to put it in your own, maybe you have a uh, tobacco pipe of some kind. Maybe you have a little bowl. Maybe you have a bubbler. Remember those? Remember bubblers? That was that Bubbles, was fucking man. I didn't like them because I loved quite, them. It wasn't quite a piece. It wasn't quite a bong. I was like, Stop, I'll, I'll go one way or the other. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need this middleman bullshit. I'm, I'm not into it. <laughs> well, either way, it, whatever piece you have, you could throw some of that shit in there and smoke it. And they got so many different different strands, strains. Yeah. Uh, we've got. I like to smoke the fucking dream. You know, there's relax, there's peace. Relax I'm up and peace. And I like a little create, man. A little create every once in a while. If you're feeling a little, you know, they got these little fun little indica sativa blends. And uh, depending on your mood, uh, they have a little something for you. So make sure to go to uh, our friends over at cushydreams.com. That's K-U-S-H-Y dreams.com. And put in the promo code pod don't. That's P-O-D-D-O-N-T. And you will get 20% off your first order. They're basically fucking, they're basically rolling it up for you, smoking it, shotgunning it into your lungs and jacking you off with that deal. So you would be a fool, a a little dick fool, uh, not to, not to fucking go to our friends at cushydreams.com and use promo code pod. Don't get on that dude. Yes. Um, but 
we we've got a lot of good i i we got we're gonna read more of these uh next episode too i keep forgetting to but there's a lot a lot of people are asking for more pegging talk over here look we give the people what they want this is from train ham who yeah. says mvp mike budenholzer's wife is the mvp maniacally vocal pegger <laughs> very nice <laughs> keep it up she's big william peralta in light of recent events i'd like to offer a bottle you have only begun scratching the surface of your pegging potential. Pato lies the DeAndre wow. Ayton of pegging. Now over wow. a year in, and we see the raw talent. Your most recent pod was like the Suns' bubble performance. The key going forward is consistency. And like him, you would also fail an NBA drug test. Let's hope Cushy Dreams is not on the banned substance list. Keep up the pegging talk because you can. <laughs> great. Wow. Great. That's a great. William Peralta, very nice. Hey, by the way, there, buddy. if you're a Pod Don't Lie fan, you also should buckle up for november stavi and i are going to get our nba 2k that's live right stream going again you're going to be live streaming Fantasy on youtube draft. i can't wait man i can't wait either my friend um but for now why don't we end and look i like i said i like i mentioned i am prairie dogging but i think it's time I'll, for I'll do this quick we have we have our a newest segment the producers at pod don't lie the the guys up up in their ivory tower the executives <laughs> Love word on the street so much that they've given Sam leeway to introduce a new, a new segment. And th- why don't you, why don't you take it away, Sam? I went through the, the chain of segment? command here, dude. I, I, I try to respect the, the higher ups here at pod. Don't lie. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so we need some activities now that the NBA season's over. I want to de- uh, debut a new segment called nineties action corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, I showed uh, I love it. a very important woman in my life, the fugitive recently yes and then i told she was like this is insane it's good fugitive rules it's it's great so then i said all right we got to watch some clips from air force one have you ever seen the movie air force one i have never seen it actually i wanted to see it ridiculous 90s basically the the poster just says harrison ford is the president of the united states (laughs) it's made in earnest it's not like snakes on the plane yeah yeah it's like no we it's complete american propaganda it's, that rules it's gary oldman is a russian terrorist who overtakes the plane hell yeah he overtakes air force one and of yeah. course harrison ford and when fucking william h macy who gets the most who gets done dirty in every night every movie. every fucking time fargo boogie nights it get a uh, brutal oh. death Bru- Fargo or Boogie Nights is hysterical. <laughs> Brutal. <I> mean, yeah. <laughs> but my point is, we got to roll a couple clips. It's it's so fucking cheesy and so. Let's great. do it. Let's go, Harry. Uh, Hard Dick Harry. HDH hit us, baby. Let's roll this and I, to set up this clip, I believe this is uh, Harrison Ford's tied up, and he's using a little piece of glass to undo it, and he's reaching for a machine gun. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh fuck yeah! He didn't even need the glass. The Russians are <laughs> celebrating. Pieces of shit. Fuck the Russians. Boo. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> oh, power bombs. He did the rock bottom, dude. <laughs> now he's got the Russians gun. Was he like a war hero or something, or just some fucking? I think he foppish... fought. He was in the army or something. Uh uh-huh. Some shit. Do you oh, imagine classic. Trump? Oh, <laughs> my man got got. Dude, Harrison Ford knows a lot of karate for a fucking president. Uh, he's shocked. <laughs> oh, damn. So now, one more clip, Harry. Yes. You got to go to the next clip now. I'm very excited for this one. This is now they're fighting on the plane. Hell yeah. And it's Gary Hand-to-hand Oldman. Hand-to-hand combat. Hand-to-hand combat. Harrison Ford's very brave. He's he, He's the president of the United States. This yep. Is, Whoever pitched this movie was like, he's the president, but he fights off terrorists. So, <laughs> yeah. so let's go to this scene real, real quick. And make sure you blast some music here, Harry. Get off my plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Gary Oldman was sent back. Get the music. Get the music. <laughs> Gary Oldman's dead ass body just floating in a parachute. 
Dude, Hell like, yeah, dude. I love this movie was made in earnest. I love that. Oh, yeah. That, like, nowadays you would never make a movie where they're like, he's the president and we like him. <laughs> right, right. The president is good. <laughs> and he's fighting the Russians. Nah, I bet you there'll be some lib resistance bullshit where Joe Biden fights P Putin soon. <laughs> I can't wait to see that fucking. I can't wait to see Democrats try and pretend Biden is like a good president. Uh, uh, yeah, it's better anyway. than the alternative. But that's, of course, I, I of want course. them to make this movie with Trump, but he just pushes Donald Jr. into a terrorist who shoots him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll shoot. He's just trying to hold his own son ransom. He just got a gun up to Don Jr. And the Russians is just like, okay. <laughs> anyway, Air Force One. So Air Force ridiculous. One, check it out. I'm gonna have to fucking throw some throw throw some of my favorite little uh, action movies here. In throw the me one, dude. I, you next week. You next week. One. Next week, I'll I'll lead. Well, a story I heard is that Harrison Ford was baked the entire movie, <laughs> and just he's he's just always high. So they'd be like, "We have 15 minutes," and Harrison Ford would just look at, at Gary Oldman like, "You want to smoke? You want to?" Yeah, <laughs> sounds fun, dude. Sounds like a nice way to make a living. Uh, um, good. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for reviewing, and we'll read more of these uh, coming up. Every we we're gonna make that a regular part. So. Hit us with a nice review like our boy did. Um, fuck. I really look. The time has come where I must leave the podcast. So I have to no. go. <laughs> Dude, be safe. Be Things safe. are tough. Goodbye, everyone. Things are brutal right now. But thank sorry, you for listening. We for love you. you. Watch two scenes. In Air Force One. <laughs> it's it's getting dire. I got to go. Bye. Bye.